Are you looking for a job? Are you struggling to get prepared for a phone interview? You're checking social media platforms to know more about the company culture and where to apply? Look no more, you're at the right place. My goal is to introduce you to tips that will help you uh, with your job search by interviewing experts in the industry. Hi everyone, my name is Meher from Vancouver BST and welcome to my interview series. By the end of each interview, you will be filled with knowledge that will elevate you your job search. And if you are first time watching, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any interview. So let's start with today's interview. Hi everyone, welcome for another ser interview series with me. Today it's my privilege to interview Ryan or Hi Ryan, how are you doing? Good, thanks. How are you? So, I'm good. So Ryan is the Chief People Officer and Co-Founder of Clio. Combining his in-depth software development and law firm IT experience with his passion for working with people, Ryan's leadership has been critical in driving and sustaining Clio's award-winning culture. So Ryan, my first question for you will be, is take us back in 2018, almost 10 years, congratulations for the anniversary of the company. So in 2008, with your uh, best friend Jack, you were sitting where? What happened? Why Clio was invented? We know that at that time, 2018, there was a crisis, and then uh, I read that law firms were struggling in with technology and how to pursue. So what happened? Why Clio was born and what's happening? Yeah, yeah, no, good question. Um, so Jack and I have known each other since we were eight um, and, you know, have been friends for our entire adult lives. And, um, you know, growing up, we, we um, had always had an idea that we wanted to build a business together and um, had always had uh, aspects of entrepreneurship. And, um, you know, so we had started a variety of, of little uh, companies as we were we were kids and kind of knew that we were inclined to to start a business at some point and, and I talked about it. Um, so we uh, we'd grown up in Edmonton. I had moved to Vancouver after high school to go to university. Um, and as I was going through university, I kind of uh, wasn't sure what I wanted to be doing. And uh, it was around the time that there was, um, uh, you know, a lot of uh, focus around uh, you know networking and getting you know uh, uh, offices on. The internet, and uh, it was also around the, the time that there was the Y two K crisis, and uh, so there was there was a lot of opportunity in uh, in IT, and so um, even though I had graduated with a degree in kinesiology, I decided to uh, to get into you know ride the IT wave, and uh, so I found myself working in a large uh, national law firm named uh, Gowlings, um, and uh, you know kind of worked my way up in their kind of IT group and, and uh, was basically doing technology uh, administration and management for the law firm um, as a part of their national IT group and, and uh, you know I worked there for a little over eight years and uh, during that time I got exposed to um, what you know a really sophisticated uh, technology environment looks like mm -hmm. in a law firm um, and it was you know by by way of that experience that um, you know it, it kind of led us to the conclusion that hey, there's a real opportunity here. Um, you know, there's there's a ton of, of systems and capability that are really um, you know isolated to the large firm environments and and, and something that, that wasn't a privilege that was afforded to to everybody else. So you know, solos and, and small firms. And um, well, what I didn't realize at the time was that you know, eighty percent of the legal marketplace uh, is is either solo lawyers or or people operating in small law firms. Um, and you know most of, of these folks were either not using any kind of system to support their for their practice, or, um, or or they were kind of cobbling together something that, that you know helped them to manage the the vast number of things that mm -hmm. that they needed to, to be on top of. And so um, you know it was also at a time where you know if you recall 2008 there was um, kind of a, a trend to you know software starting to move mm -hmm. off of desktops and, and into the cloud and. Um, you know, and I, I think that uh, Jack and I, you know, view that as an opportunity. So, um, you know, we had stayed in, in really close contact um, through a university and, um, you know, and, and into our working lives. And, uh, you know, I, I called him up one day and I said, hey, I think there's, a, I think there's an opportunity here. You found your niche. Yeah, we found our niche. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, you know, this is something we should carefully consider. And so uh, we worked with a fellow at the Law Society of, of British Columbia. Yeah. and. Um, and uh, he helped us, you know, kind of flesh out the idea and, and help to find us beta users and 
um, and, and that was kind of the, the seed that, that helped to uh, get us off the ground. And, um, and uh, from there, I mean, you know, we, we just crossed our fingers and hoped that the product that we were, we were developing would find resonance yeah. with the marketplace. And the market responded positively. It, it, it did. I mean, you know, originally we had pretty modest goals. Uh, we thought that if we could get a few lawyers yeah. in British Columbia using the software, that that would be uh, make for you know a, a great business and, and would afford, afford us a little bit of a uh, you know, lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And um, but you know what we discovered was that uh, there was a lot more demand than we had even anticipated, and uh, in particular from from lawyers practicing in the United States, and uh, so. Uh, even though you know, we got our start here in BC, uh, we saw you know a, a vast amount of uptake coming out of the US, and, uh, um, and and that was enough to kind of get us that initial traction and attract some investment and attract some early <laughs> um, uh, early employees. And yeah, uh, yeah the, the do you rest still have your first employee? We do. Uh, we have our first two employees, in fact. Yeah. Uh, I can hear from your story that entrepreneurship was part of you, yes. in your blood. Yes. So we know that in Vancouver, everyone is trying to do entrepreneurship. So what are some of the struggles you face during building Clio, and if you can share it, and if you have any failures, and we know that we can learn from Farfest, what, then, what can you can tell to the audience that is listening and watching, what can they learn from your experience? Um, yeah, I, you know, entrepreneurship, I, I think it's like incredibly rewarding. Um, you know, I, I, you know, if, if if anybody has the means or the inclination, I'd, I'd certainly encourage it. And, and while we know that the statistics are that a lot of businesses try and, and fail, um, you know, I think with like perseverance and uh, um, you, know, you know, we certainly um, you know see a lot of uh, opportunity for businesses to yeah. succeed in the, in the local economy. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, you know something that I would encourage any entrepreneur to do is you know probably not try and go it on their own. Um, you know, I think it's really important to have a, a business partner that can, uh, you know, help to be your, your foil, help to be your prop, and, you know, help to be, uh, you know, source of inspiration, uh, because, you know, especially when you're trying to get a business off the ground, and you're, um, you, you know, you're, you're trying to persevere through those opportunities and failure, it, it's nice to have, you know, somebody who you can lean on, because, yeah, um, you know, there, there, there certainly are the, the highs and the lows, mm -hmm. and, Experiencing those logos, it's, it's nice to have somebody that you can um, really rely on, and and it, it's often the case that I, I find that like when when one of you is experiencing a low, the other one might not be, and, and so you can kind of help to, to support each other. Um, Any specific failure that you can uh, remember that you can share with us that helped you shape Clio better? Um, you know, I, I think that like some of some of our, our failure around um, you know like learning how to hire great people, um, you know, I think that, uh, that that was certainly something that, that we struggled with in our early days. Uh, you know, where do you go to find great people? How do you filter for, for great people? How do you make sure that the people you bring on board are, um, are, are being successfully integrated into the organization? And I think that, you know, we certainly had some, um, I mean, obviously we we did some things right, and the yeah. first couple of employees are, are still with us. But um, you know, I, I think there were also a lot of uh, places where um, we weren't necessarily hiring against the right profile or setting people up for success. And, um, and I think that those were you know, kind of really important failures that um, you know were, were hard lessons. But I, I think have kind of you know we've we've integrated it into to how we onboard people, and um, and and you know I, I think it's led us to a lot of success with you know hiring people. Are a great fit for our organization, mm -hmm. um, and and also doing a really good job of retaining people at, at this point. And uh, um, you know, I think that that's that's been important. The other the other you know thing was um, you know, there were there were uh, some some points in time where you know Cleo was was really touching me in terms of whether it would um, be sustainable or mm -hmm. not. And, and certainly through those early uh, early days when you know we didn't have a ton of capital mm -hmm. and we were trying to make ends meet. Um, you know, trying to trying to like hone our pitch and trying to get our message out to investors and trying to like link up with the investors. There's a lot of trial and error. There, so there is yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and, yeah. Uh, and I, I think that's any any entrepreneur yeah. needs to be signed up yeah. for that. And yeah. thank you, Ryan, for giving us a glimpse of how Clio came up. And after ten years of success, I'm sure it will be more growing. So I'll say to the audience or whoever watching or uh, listening. Uh, if you have any tips in terms of entrepreneurship or things that you have learned from your failures, 
please leave comments below, uh, like and share the video, and tune in tomorrow for another interview question with Ryan.